Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number four. And yes, I think it's finally over. So today's pseudoscientist has made several videos responding to me for the last eight months, and I think they may have finally stopped. There is enough content there to make something like a seven hour video, which I'm gonna do, but not today. But anyway, today we're not gonna be responding to Bill Gaty responding to me. I'm going to be responding to a video by Bill Gaty, which is part of a series which I've covered most of, except for this video. Now the video is titled, Are Predictions a Part of Science? And clearly, they are a part of science, but let's see what Bill Gaty has to say on the issue. Which one is the authentic prophet? Is it the fellow who vaguely states that someday humans will become extinct? Or is it the fellow who more precisely states that on the 1st of March, of the year 2030, the last human will die. Well, it depends who is right. If someone says you're going to get a phone call within four minutes and you get a phone call within four minutes, then you might assume that they have some kind of knowledge as to why you're getting the phone call. Yes, it could be a lucky guess, but the more information they provide about it, the more likely they have some knowledge. Like if they say, oh, Tom is going to ring you in four minutes, and then Tom does ring you in four minutes, that is very unlikely that they just guessed that. However, if someone says you're going to get a phone call next year and you do get a phone call next year, then it doesn't take a genius to work out that the likelihood was that you were just going to get a phone call regardless of whether they knew anything about it or not. In fact, this is how astrology often operates, by making a statement that's so vague that it's likely to come true. And because of this, astrology is not considered to be science, because you cannot test something that's so vague. Now before Bill agrees with me on the basis of astrology doesn't explain anything, I'm just going to make up an explanation right now. According to astrology, your personality can accurately be explained by the position of stars filling up your chakra with tiny electromagnetic ropes as you are born. I hope I didn't just accidentally make Bill Gady believe in astrology there. Is a prediction the same thing as a prophecy? I would say no. A prophecy is a type of prediction, but a prediction isn't always a prophecy. Usually prophecies contain connotations of the supernatural, but you don't need to have supernatural powers in order to make a prediction. Does predicting play any role whatsoever in science? Yes it does, because if you have a hypothesis that you want to test, you need to go, okay, what is the logical outcome of this hypothesis, test it, and then if that matches the prediction, well, then your hypothesis is valid. The mathematical establishment regards predictions to be an integral part of science. The reason for this is not a mystery. Describe is all that mathematics is capable of or authorized to do. And without an explanation to support it, a prediction is just a description. With predictions, it doesn't matter whether it's a description or an explanation. The point of predictions is to validate whether what you are testing is accurate or not. Let's take weather forecasting as an example. Let's say that you've got two different models. One says that it's going to rain, and the other says that it's going to snow. If it rains, then the one that says that it's going to rain is more accurate. If it snows, then the one that says that it's going to snow is more accurate. And if it does neither, then you're probably going to need a better model. A car is traveling at 50 miles per hour. The mathematician can predict that it will be 50 miles away from origin if it travels on a rectilinear path. Even if the prediction materializes, all that the mathematician has done is describe what's going to happen. Well actually, there's something that you missed there, Bill. If you know that a car is going to be 50 miles away after an hour, then you know why it's going to be 50 miles away, don't you? Because it's traveling at 50 miles an hour. Now let's say that you have two competing hypotheses here. One says that after an hour the car is going to be 75 miles away because it is traveling at 75 miles an hour. And the other says that after an hour it's going to be 50 miles away because it is traveling at 50 miles an hour. If after an hour it is 50 miles away, then the explanation that it was traveling at 50 miles an hour becomes a whole lot more plausible. I have many more examples, don't you worry. The dictionary defines prediction as a statement about a future event, often based upon experience or knowledge. In a previous video we showed that knowledge is nothing more than a synonym of belief. But does prediction require that the fortune teller base it on experience? 
an element that patently invokes the past? You know, if you want to work out what's going to happen, a good idea to do that is to work out what has happened. By paying attention to what has happened, I can then work out what's going to happen. Like if I keep on dropping an object and it keeps on falling towards the ground, then I can assume that if I keep on dropping the object, it's going to keep on dropping towards the ground. And that works until you drop a helium balloon, in which case it doesn't drop towards the ground, it drops towards the ceiling. Now you've got an extra variable, you've got some things that drop towards the ground and some things that drop towards the ceiling. And you can explain this using something like buoyancy. And the only way that you can derive something like buoyancy is by paying attention to what has happened. You can't really derive buoyancy from just guessing because when you do, you get flat earthers that think that it's all just density. The prophet predicts that Halley's Comet will arrive in our cosmic neighborhood in the year 2061. So far, all we have is a description. The soothsayer has yet to state a cause that will trigger the phenomenon. But what if the astrologer clarifies that Halley's Comet returns every 75 years? This periodicity is certainly based on experience, but we still have nothing more than a description. We have no idea what causes the comet to circle the sun. Okay, let's take this example. Someone says we're next going to see Halley's Comet in 2061. Now, how are they working that out? Well, they've worked out that we see Halley's Comet every 75 to 76 years. And the last time that we saw it was in 1986, so the next time that we'll see it will be in 2061. Now that is an explanation for why. You can always ask, okay, why do we see it every 75 years? And the answer to that is, well, it circles the sun. And you can ask, why does it circle the sun? Well, it circles the sun because of gravity. But if someone says that in two years it's going to go through a wormhole, so we'll end up seeing it in five years, then... That is a prediction that can be tested. If that doesn't end up happening, then we know that that explanation that they gave is false. Is science about predicting that if I let go of the pen, it will fall to the floor rather than to the ceiling? Is science about predicting the rate at which the pen will fall to the floor because I have measured this a million times? Or is science about explaining what causes the pen to fall to the floor. Well, every part of that has to do with science, but you can't dismiss the predictions. I'm going to use another one of my examples. Let's say that you've got a person called Bob, and Bob thinks that the Earth is not spinning. Now, Bob knows that there are these extremely sensitive gyroscopes that if turned even so subtly, it's going to register it. Now, Bob concludes that if he can get one of these gyroscopes and it registers no rotation, then the Earth is not spinning. However, if it registers a rotation of 15 degrees per hour, then the Earth is obviously spinning. So, um, hey Bob, what were your results again? But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Now, Bob has made a prediction to test what is correct out of two different possibilities. The reason he got the result was because the Earth is spinning at a rate of 15 degrees per hour. This is how you verify things like the Earth being a globe, or the Earth going around the Sun. If we didn't use predictions to validate certain ideas, then we would still believe that Earth is at the center of the universe and that the Sun goes around us. We would still believe that we were created as we are by an intelligent being to worship him. Okay, maybe a lot of people still believe that. But the good thing is that we can test these ideas to work out what might be true, rather than just guessing and going with whatever feels best. Anyone can make an open-ended prediction and guess that humans will become extinct someday. It is a little harder to give a precise date when this event will occur. But hopefully, science is about neither. I will agree that science shouldn't be about vague guesses. That is the role of pseudoscience. But precise predictions? Well then, you've got something that you can test. Science should be objective so that the listener understands. Hopefully, science is about explaining the mechanism that will cause the extinction of man. Okay, so by understanding the mechanism, that is what allows you to make the prediction. For the most part, predictions in science are very useless if you don't have any kind of proposed mechanism. The exception to that would be quantum mechanics, and that's because when it comes to quantum mechanics, we have really got no idea what's going on underneath it all. But anyway, that's where I'm going to end it, so leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Join us tomorrow, where we're going to take a look at a pseudoscientist that Bill Gady here 
actually disagrees with. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Jet Alone, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Wolfie, Mori, Graymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, Kit and Mick Kitten from Kitten Town, Craig D'Amelio, Nerthan Termson, and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.